Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and welcome to No Budget Reviews, the series where we go around the country finding cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and filming them with absolutely no money at all. So we have to use my phone, no microphones, no fancy DSLRs, nothing like that. Just good honest cars that you can buy for very little money and you can enjoy driving. Well, viewers, another day, another deserted leisure centre on a Saturday. Only this time we're in Eastleigh, just down the road from where we live, filming this 2000 Mercedes Benz CLK 230 compressor avant garde. This is a CLK convertible. You might think, what on earth is a Mercedes CLK doing? on no budget reviews. Well, <laughs> this car costs less money than you might think. It actually costs the owner, whose name is Alwyn, 500 pounds. Unbelievable, less than 100,000 miles, full MOT, working roof. You can definitely buy a CLK. This is a first generation CLK. The models overall are known as the W208. The open top one is known as the A208 and the coupe the C208. This is a 2.3 litre engine with about 195 horsepower. This is the supercharged version. Compressor is German for supercharger. And the paintwork actually looks very good on this car. It's different actually on camera from real life. In, in, in real life it's more like an oxblood colour has the AMG wheels. Now, Mercedes of this, of this era do suffer from rust, and this is no exception. We can just see here where the lacquer's coming off a bit, and then there, there is a bit of rust on this arch. The main area, though, that they go is actually at the front, and for some weird reason, the right-hand side of this car is, is better than the left, probably just because the cars get driven in this country um, with a curb on this side and as you can see that is a bit worse it's by no means the worst I've seen I've seen E-classes of this era with holes in the front wings before so yes AMG wheels and this is the avant-garde trim there were two main trims at this particular point this is a facelifted first generation CLK uh, facelift I think was August 99 and before the facelift, they were known as the Sport. There's also an Elegance trim. And um, right at the end of production of these, in about 2003, there was a, a, a final edition as well. Right, I think it's time for us to have a look in the boot. You can also open this from inside the car. About 350 litres of space is in this particular one and you do you need to sort of make sure that the luggage cover is in the right position to actually you know operate the roof quite a sort of restricted space in here this, this is the window factor if you had a coupe it'd be a bit more um i presume the 350 liters of space is to do with the coupe because there's not there's no way there's that much in here if we get inside the key I've got is a, is a later Star Mercedes key, which has been reprogrammed for this type of car, just in case anybody's wondering. So if we get in and make sure we're in park, which we are, this car's actually got a foot-operated parking brake. And uh, there's the release there. It's like a Prius or something like that, although Mercedes, you know, we're making cars with probably be parking brakes you know, since the dawn of times, really. So put that in, I think turn it to the right, there we go. I think we can get the roof, get the roof done. Let's turn that for further. There we go. See if we can do this. There we go. Oh, wanting to release this. To release that, there we go. Oh, it's, here we go. Oops, give me one sec, viewers. So 
something's happening. Okay, we've got the top down now. Um, there is a particular order you have to do this uh, this top in, and um, I wasn't doing it in the right order. It's absolutely fine though. Obviously, if you get one of these cars, you make sure that someone who's owned it has not kind of um, had problems with remembering the wrong way to do the roof. Electric seats in this car, memory seats were an option. Cruise control, I'll find out if it's vacuum operator when we go for a test drive a bit later on. Even as avant-garde on the gear lever. Winter and I suppose that's sport mode for the automatic gearbox. I think this is a five-speed unit in here. Got the world's craziest cup holder here. So utterly, utterly crazy. So, somebody spent months designing that cup holder. So crazy. Again, we've got what would have been an ashtray back in the day, but it's just now a top or socket. There is the button for turning off the parking sensors. There is a one hit switch as well for all the windows you can use with the red button. Reminds me of the Alistair Twin Top actually, roof mechanism. We've got all sorts of things, spare bulbs under there. It's weird, not, the seats aren't entirely power operated. The uh, backrest angle is operated by that. Twin airbags, of course. I don't think my secret mission documents are going to go in that glove box, actually. No, they're not. It's a bit of a shame. Probably because this car is, is based on the old W202C uh, class. It's not based on the E class. I feel like a, you know, an important person sitting in this car with my dual zone climate control and all kinds of other exciting things. Wow, look at look at all these different systems you got here. You got two stage heated seats and uh, you know um, speed activated central locking and I don't know all kinds of things. At least it has light switches right in the middle of that. And I suppose if your roof doesn't work properly, you're going to need that. Right, let's see if I can actually get into the back of this car. This is going to be entertaining. Just while I'm trying this with the uh, the roof down, actually. That's nice and easy, getting in the back like that. That's not a problem. We have to, yes, we do have to lift that up like that. Oh, it's, it's quite snug in here. I mean, I've got unlimited headroom with the roof off. Uh, only a four-seater, it would seem. You have got... A rear armrest and you know being a beige leather interior it does sort of make me feel quite good really driving around in something like this the wind deflector which this car did have as an option is in the boot I'm not going to put that on but yes rather nice in here and of course we've got gas struts on the bonnet longitudinally mounted engine rear wheel drive car of course only a four cylinder, but 195 horsepower in this. It, it does depend on the model year um, as to you know what power output the, the car has. Looks reasonably easy to work on. Battery's actually in the boot of one of these, it's not in the front of the car. I presume because you could get a V8 version of this, which is 4.3 litres, that so you needed to be able to put it somewhere well out of the way. This is actually a chain driven engine, so no worries about cam belts or anything like that. Enormous 7 litre washer bottle as well. We do actually have headlamp washers on this car. Those are not blanky plates, those are little things that come out. Um, which obviously for those of you who are into that kind of thing, and some of you are, then I'm sure you, you can get excited about that. Right, I think it's time for a little drive. Right viewers, we've got the roof up because if I drive this car with the roof down you will not be able to hear me. Even if it means I do have lighting problems for some reason, I don't know why. Very easy to drive with this automatic gearbox. Uh, ride doesn't seem too firm. 
first of all I've got to get out of this junction. Eine Stunde später. It's always interesting with Mercedes Benz having to get used to lights and wipers being on one stalk and then finding that your hand <laughs> goes to the um, cruise control stalk accidentally half the time. Um, for some reason, because of the avant garde and we've got the slightly firmer suspension, I think this is going to be the load over the tires. My camera mount appears to be jumping up and down everywhere. Um, you know, because this is no budget reviews, uh, that's just the way that it goes. Uh, seems fast enough though. Got to 16 knees is, I think, about eight and a half seconds, which seems um, pretty good to me. Other models in the range were the CLK 200. That was only made during the early part of this car's production life and that uh, generated 136 horsepower which I don't think is enough in a car like this. That was replaced a bit later on with a supercharged compressor version of that engine with either 163 horsepower which would have been in this country or 190 horsepower. I imagine that was in markets where a 2.3 litre engine was heavily taxed and of course this one the uh, 230 compressor, again a four cylinder unit, generating somewhere between 190 and 197 horsepower. It depends on the year and where you are and things. Above that, uh, get onto a, a, a V6 model, the CLK 320. Uh, just check that's 221 horsepower, 3.2 V6. Then after that, there's a V8 version, actually, two of those. There is the CLK430, that generated around 275 horsepower from the 4.3 litre V8. And then there's a 5.4 litre V8, the, CLK, the uh, AMG55 version, I don't know why they call it, the 55, it's only 54, I suppose. And that had 342 horsepower. I don't uh, have anything that's uh, off the limits today because I don't think there were any diesels in the uh, W208 lineup. So here we are on the motorway and uh, we'll just see if this vacuum operated cruise control system, I think it's a vacuum system in this car, we'll soon find out, actually works quite well. My camera mat's not jumping up and down so much anymore either, which is, you know, better. I don't like it when it jumps up and down, it makes me feel a bit nauseous, and also um, makes you think that, um, you know, we don't have any budget for our reviews, which of course we don't, which is why the, uh, the mount's in the way as well. So here we are, 50 miles an hour. Set that. How does this thing work anyway? This is weird. Ooh. Cruise controls on. There we go. Could be an electronic system, I suppose. Before I forget, I must point out that um, Alwyn's son Aaron actually has his own YouTube channel, which is called uh, Aaron's Autos, I believe. Right, kick down, here we go. Wow. <laughs> oh. Yes, I know that was a bit painful for you because the camera's now shaking around like crazy. But, I mean, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that very much. I think um, Olwyn does enjoy it too. But this is his daily car at the moment um, during these colder months. He has other, you know, very nice cars that come out on a fine day. Um, but this one is the one at the moment. And with this really snug hood, it doesn't 
seem to be any colder in here it would be a car with a metal roof and this engine I, I don't think you'd get more than 30 miles per gallon to be honest in this but I don't think that really matters when you've paid less than a thousand pounds for a car like this I mean who honestly cares about that you've saved so much money anyway right I think it's time to get off the motorway So viewers, should you consider a first generation Mercedes CLK? Well, it's a bit of a philosophical question because do you need a car like this? Maybe not. Do you want a car like this? Well, probably. Um, the fact that it costs so little money is amazing. Funny thing is though, you know, with all this sort of fancy stuff, single wiper blades and you know, electric seats and everything like that, particularly this roof. If these things do start to go wrong, then the bills can outweigh the cost of the car. But a good one like this, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Just got to remember to close the roof in the right, um, the right order. It's a public service announcement for you. Anyway, um, thank you for watching this episode of No Budget Reviews. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more automotive hijinks and general japery. Click the notification bell to be informed of new uploads. I also uh, have a website and social media links. Those are in the description below. And yes, we'll see you again for another episode of No Budget Reviews.